Welcome to Fear Hustle Podcast. I'm Mike. And this is Orlando, and we are on episode 36. 36. Woo woo. That's what we're doing from now on. No special numbers. We're just doing some, some shout outs. Some sound effects. Some sound effects. 36. All right. So, in case you're wondering what this episode is about, what do you what do you think it's about? Well, I know what it's about. I know. They know what it's about. They saw the title. I know. Oh, that's right. See, I, I don't. We're just recording this raw right now. So, we are going to talk about what are some characteristics of being a reseller. And the key thing is, we want to make sure you know that not only we're informative, but you know, have a little fun with this, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because reselling doesn't have to be like straight info. All this the is time. this is like signs you're a reseller, right? Like like. Remember the old like joke was like yeah Jeff yeah, Foxworthy you might, you might be a redneck the or the here's your sign right remember well, that wasn't no. Jeff Foxworthy that was uh, I don't know what that Bill Ingvall you don't remember those here's no, your sign I don't sign. even know who that is oh man his jokes were so funny it was like um it, it was basically the same thing like you might be a redneck but it was like you're. You're stupid. Like if you're if you're really really stupid, you should have to like hold a sign up that says you're stupid. And like, I wonder if you might be a redneck would even work anymore. Yeah, I don't know. Right in this age, like there probably would be protests or something. Probably. I don't know. I I want to even be careful to even mention that. That's nah, fine. Okay, um, I'm just throwing it out. There. But 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 the the billing of all ones, the here's your signs were great because it was like, you know, just the craziest jokes. Like someone walk, the people walk up to you and they ask you questions. Like you got a moving truck outside your house and you're packing boxes in the moving truck and somebody asks you, so you're moving. And you just say, nope, once a, once a year, I like to pack up all my stuff, see if it fits, and then put it back in the house. That is Here's like, your sign, right? Like, yeah. It's so ironic. So that's one of the things we're going to talk about later. Like, one of the things that I, I've got, and actually, I've had people ask me, like, I have all these FBA boxes, right, And they in my neighborhood, and they're like, are, are you moving? Mm, it's like, yep. is, is everything okay at home? Just Just wondering about you. There's a lot of boxes coming in and out of that house. Oh, I know. Trust me. I get that question too. They're like, but at least online reselling isn't like as foreign anymore. Mm. I think like 15 years ago, people would be like, what is going on? Like, why do you always get stuff? Right now, people get stuff all the time. Think about it. We have the term porch pirates. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a thing. I mean, it, it is crazy how, how much things have changed and, and, and even just the fact that, what is it? Like USPS does deliveries now, like Sundays. In the, packages. Yeah, that that is strange. Like you used to just be like, "Yep, there's no mail on Sundays," but like, oh wait, now that Amazon was ruling the world, like there there are like, and not just UPS, like USPS sometimes delivers stuff on the. Or weekend. there's those random Amazon vans. Yep. So all right, hey, let's those get into the, the episode. We can like mull over this all day. All right, so we try to break it down into three categories. Just kind of you know, we we took suggestions from those of you that follow us on IG. <laughs> we had like an IG story question and said, "Hey, what are some signs?" You guys had some hilarious input. Um, and some things we were kind of wow, and and other things were like interesting. Never thought about that. Hmm. So we'll see where Mike lands on. I'm interested. Yeah, I Mike. haven't I haven't looked at any of these yet. You haven't so looked at them at all. These are going to be like super fresh for me. Nice. And plus, remember, Mike's been reselling since June. So some of these you may relate with, and some of you're like, "What are you talking about?" Yeah, I might I might not have reached that level of reselling. <laughs> that level, that tier. Yeah, I'm I'm constantly leveling up, but you know, I, I'm not I'm not at that mode yet. Okay. All right, so we broke it down into three categories. One is, you know, what are some signs when you're at a thrift store or you're doing retail arbitrage? Then we wanted to talk about what if you're at a garage or a yard sale? Then last of all, how does reselling change you as a person? Do you think it changes you? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Okay, we'll talk about that. I, I really do think. I think you see things completely different, especially if you never had been into reselling and then slowly you start catching on to things. Mm. All right, so uh, t- take a look at the first one. Do you think that's true? So... The first, the first one we talk about, we go to thrift stores, right? Somebody had said that they build a fort in the back of the store to look up comps. Have you experienced that, Mike? Look up, build a fort. Mm, um, give me, give me a picture. What does this look like? Like, like a pillow fort? Okay. Like, uh, no, what, do, what do you mean? <laughs> okay, maybe a pillow fort to block yourself from other resellers. But have you ever, when you source, do you research right away, or do you put them all in your cart and you go like to a corner in the store? Okay, I mean that. I guess that makes sense. Um, when I first started reselling, I would stand at like the rack or wherever the 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 shelves, and I'd hold an item and I would do all the research. And I still do that quite a bit, but but I've gotten better at looking at stuff, and I've realized how important time is. So sometimes I'll grab things that are interesting that I'm like, this might be valuable, put it in the cart, and I keep moving, and then. Um, and then after I've checked everything, and I'm like, okay, I I haven't missed any like of the obvious. 
you know, I, I would hate to be stuck at, at a at a shelf looking up an item and like two feet over is the thing that I know sells really well. And I just and then the hand comes there. out. Yeah, and I, I see just somebody grab it. it and I'm like, no. Yeah. So I, I'm definitely getting better at uh at filling up the car and then researching the the questionable items after I've checked all the good stuff. See, my problem now is Instagram. Mm. So when I was at uh, the Salvation Army, I want to say about two months ago, remember that haul of like reef shoes that I picked up? Mm. I lost 10 of those shoes. Because what did I do? Oh, I got to do this for the gram. And I pulled out my phone while she was researching. I didn't think she was a reseller. I thought she was just looking mm. to buy for herself. The moment from pocket to in front of me, I looked over and she already put like eight to 10 boxes in her cart because she recognized I was a reseller. Signs of a reseller. Yeah. That hurt. That does hurt. See, but you notice that, that happens more. Like when we go to garage sales or anything, you've talked about this. Like when we try to provide content, it hurts our business a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm not as good at uh, making videos while I'm out and about as you are. Um, and part of it, I, I think. But even I don't show stuff to like nighttime sometimes because mm. you're just moving yeah you've got to keep going and it's it is tough it, and and yeah like you said taking that couple of moments to to record a quick insta story um that could be the make or break moment it could be a few hundred dollars yeah. so but you know that is a sign and if you're new that's something we suggest you do like don't you know start researching because you don't know like you could be in a clothing rack and five hangers over there could be like that hundred dollar rain spooner and somebody will just snatch it, mm. and you'll go like, no, and you'll lose it. Yeah. Happened many times. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I see there's another one here that's it's similar to us. It's sitting in the back of a Goodwill on the couch checking out comps. It's a good idea. I've never done that. I've never... Just to use the couch and just kick back? Yeah, that's a... I mean, why not, right? I, I, I tell you... Well, I don't know. Some couches I don't want to sit on. In yeah, I think you got to use your judgment. Um, <laughs> and, and maybe just sit on like the arm part of it. Or maybe not a couch. Maybe just like one of the, the wood stools that they have. Because yeah, there's yeah. some couches like you sit and you can't get up anymore. Have you have you been in one of those couches? Um, no. Or maybe maybe because you're in a different physical shape than I am. Mm, put taller. That, put that, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. You're just taller. Center of, center, center of gravity is a little different. <laughs> All right, we're moving on now from that awkwardness. Now this is I thought this was hilarious. So. Have you ever have you ever had a moment where like your wife's like, "Hey, hon, can you go pick this up?" And then you like disappeared. Has that happened yet? Oh, you mean like I, take a stop somewhere? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That happens all the time. So, um, disappear disappear for hours for a simple grocery run. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, that happens sometimes. And and usually it's me just saying like, Hey, I'll be back in like 15 minutes. I got to go get whatever for dinner. And then, yeah, I'll stop at the library and scan some books or stuff. We have you a stop at the library, like thrift. not even a thrift store, a well, library. Well, the, see where I'm at, there's a, there's a store, the grocery store and right behind the grocery store is the library. And across the street from the grocery store is the thrift store. So I kind of like do the the three at one time. <laughs> There's that temptation, like yeah, you just got to pull off the I'm, side of the road. And I'm, you know, it it takes a little bit longer than 15 minutes when you do that. So that's, that's one that true. cracked me up here that somebody put was that they disappear for hours and they end up at six more Walgreens. Mm. And I will say that has happened. So I, uh, you know, especially during Q4, it's the worst, right? Because you're looking for those quick flips at Q4. So. The For me, it's Walmart. Like, I'll go to Walmart, and I'm like, ah, oh, I'll just go check out the toy aisle. And then you see something on clearance, and, you know, clearance ends up happening everywhere else for the most part. So then I go to one Walmart and then another Walmart. Then you give us this call and go, hey, I got this great deal. Like, I need to keep moving. And then it becomes seven Walmarts. Yeah. No, I mean, it happens. That's happened to us a few times. We've, we've gone into um, specifically Target to pick up like pacifier for my son or something. And, um, while we're in there, we're like, every time we go to target now, we check like the, the, the little clearance sections. It's just area, part of who know. you are yeah. now. Yeah. So we check and yeah, there's times where it's like, Oh my goodness, like this is a good deal. And we, we make the rounds like what was supposed to have been just a quick, we're going to go to target turns into, well, it's date night. Like, I guess we're getting dinner out. Like with we're kid and up. toe. Yep. Oh yeah. He loves it. He, he's like the be- easiest to go shopping with, but yeah, we definitely, a trip to target can be a trip to every target in a 20 mile radius. If we're not careful. It is pretty crazy. Wow. Like you think about that back in the day, I would say before even retail arbitrage was big, you know, I, I never, I mean, think about it. Thrift stores weren't as common. I think they're a lot more common now than when we grew up. Mm. Do you agree? 
Or maybe we didn't notice. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know if I like, paid that much attention. So those of I you that drive. are listening that were oh, reselling, f- you know, you know, back in the early 2000s or 90s, let us know because I'm interested. Like, I think right now, like, I can't go anywhere without dry. At least we're in an urban area, right? I mean, we're in San Diego, but I can't go without passing a thrift store of some type or at least having one within a mile of wherever mm. I go. Right? I know, like, in L.A., it's even worse. Mm. Like, you know, and then you talk about retail arbitrage, you got Ross, you got TG Maxx, you got Marshalls, you got, you know, whatever store you name it, you can always source on every trip. Well, I mean, I don't know if this is one of the things we mentioned here, but, you know, even thinking about future moves, like where I'm going to live, like it used to be like cities I would think about, like the the key things were like, okay, is there a Costco nearby? Is there, you know, this, uh, you know, grocery store? Now it's, yeah, I'm thinking about how many thrift stores in a five mile radius. Like it's crazy. To, no, hundred percent. Even, so, even where you're moving, you're thinking about that. So it's so funny you bring that up. So I want to say about a decade ago, I got offered a job in Colorado to, to be a teacher. And this school was literally like off the beaten path. Like you had to take a dirt road for, I think like three to five miles to get to the school. And the nearest target was 45 minutes, Mm. but I was willing to go with it. You know, I was like, eh, you know, the target, no big deal, but I wasn't reselling yet. But this last time I was offered a a position and it was going to, this was before I became a full-time reseller. You know, my rent was going to go up a thousand a month because it was going to be in a nicer part of San Diego. But then I started looking at the thrift stores and I go, you know what? There is that really good thrift store. You know, that really Mm, good one we talk about. We like, okay. And that would have been only like 10 minutes away. So I go, it might cost me a thousand dollars more, but maybe I can make that thousand dollars by being real close to that thrift store and going there every day. Yeah. That's a thing. Crazy. Yeah. I never would have thought of that. I wonder how many of you have made decisions because I do know uh, there's been people that have moved to rural areas to be able to do the reselling life. Yeah. No, I mean, that's, it's definitely a thing. I, I think of, um, you know, when I first moved to San Diego, my wife and I lived, uh, in, in a, like a fifth wheel that was on her, her parents' property. And, you know, it was, it was what we did so that I could go to school and finish school. And we really enjoyed it. It was nice. They have a lot of property. Um, and one of the things like we've seriously talked about is like, what could we do if we were to downsize simplify our life, you know, is it, is it possible that like it could totally change our lifestyle? You know what I mean? To, to go simpler, to move to an area where, where there's more, um, either more thrift stores or cost of living is less. And, and even just thinking about, you know, competition, I hear people say that, you know, certain areas it's like, yeah, there's nobody at our thrift stores. There's not other resellers here. Whereas my thrift stores, there's resellers in there every single time. Oh, I, I know. But you know what? I, I think it's the people that are telling you that are because they don't, they're not resellers themselves. That's true. They don't know what to look for. Right. You don't Which notice. is a sign of being a reseller, right? Like you can, you can, you, I, I, you look now, right? And, and I could scan in a, in a Salvation Army or a Goodwill and it's like reseller, reseller, uh, shopping for themselves, reseller, mm-hmm. shopping for themselves, right? Or sometimes you could be wrong. Oh, I'm sure like, I'm wrong. Like a good percentage of the time, but a lot of the time. Like I'm you right. start giving that eye. And then you look over, like when you walk by and they're just like texting somebody Mm. or they're on their Instagram and you're like, oh, why did I judge this person? Well, the very first time that I went to a, um, like a library to scan books, I bought a book scanner, um, and I bought, I paid for a subscription and I'm trying to set up all of like the, like the The parameters. Yeah. That would like set off different things. And, and I was trying to turn the audio off of all of them, but some of them I couldn't get the audio off because I didn't realize like that was a thing that had audio on it still. Anyway. So like, as I'm scanning things, I'm hearing certain noises and things come up. (laughs) This is your first time. Yeah. First time. And like four aisles over, I'm hearing somebody else doing the exact same thing. And occasionally like their, their phone would make the exact same noise. I'm like, Oh man, like this is happening right now. So it's I'm going race. quicker. I'm like, ding, 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 just trying to scan stuff. But yeah, you start to notice more resellers. You know, that happened to me today. I went to Walmart just to pick up, I forget, it was like a folder or something. And I see this lady, you know, with her phone and, and it was like attached to her wrist and she had a scanner and she's going through all the jerky. Scan, 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 scan. Now, I think she was an employee, like she was like a vendor. Mm. But automatically my mind goes, is she scanning for FBA? Mm. Right? It, it happens. I'm telling yeah. you, recently changes you. I like this one. This one says, uh, a sign you're a thrift store, uh, or a sign that you're a reseller is you're okay buying wax kits in bulk. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, would I be okay with it? Sure. That'd be kind of. Uh, yeah. Right. If there's money. Okay. Tell me <laughs> if you walked into a store and I don't really care what the item is, right? But if, if there's an item in there, even if it's a little embarrassing, you know, to, to, to purchase, but 
if there's profit to be made, and I, you can yeah, no, I get it. I get it. You know, but it's kind of one of do those. Do you things. really need forty of these? Yeah, but I it's sure like do. it's like sourcing undergarments, right? Sometimes they can get kind of awkward. Can it? I don't know. Do we need to go there? Hey, I mean, sign your reseller. You're willing to. That is true. You're willing to do some things. That's hundred percent. That, there, there's that you might not have normally done. That is very true. That is very true. Because, you know, back in the day, I was very much men's clothing. Mm. But now I find that there's some money to be made on the other side. And so, yeah, I'm definitely there. But I always get these weird looks. I think there's plenty enough stuff that you can you can source that you don't need to put yourself in an awkward... Like, to, to but some people don't care. Like, I know some resellers that are like, you won't miss them. Yeah, I mean, I think, they don't I think, care. I think you got to know. I mean, if, if you know, you know, right? Like, so if, if you know certain brands and certain sales... Um, definitely go for it. But, but I would say it's one of those things. Like if you're, if you walked into a CVS and that was what was on clearance was clear the shelves. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll buy all of them, please. And they'll be like, man, you know, you got, you're, you're a hairy guy, I guess you need all these <laughs> wax kits, but you know, you do what you got to do. Make that money. Well, we, this, this one I've had happen. So somebody had mentioned the fact that like they treat a, a receipt like it's a $20 bill. So if they lose a receipt in the parking lot, they'll drop whatever they're doing to chase down that receipt. Mm. And I've had it where, you know, I've had like that 2K receipt and it just flies out. And you're like, no, like I need that receipt, right, for your taxes. And what if you got to do a return, right? I don't know. It's, it's just kind of crazy things that you never would have done before. Like we said, it changes you. Mm. All right. Yeah. You know somebody commented in your mm? Did you know that? Oh no, was it a bad one? Like annoying? No. <laughs> I was like, I guess supposedly I make some outlandish comments and you reply like just you did right now. Mm. 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 It's okay. It was like this too before we even did reselling. That's how I responded to you. I think so. You I think so. But I was your I got called. Principal. I got I got called out for that actually at, at did you work really? the other day, not making that noise. But and 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 so okay, so I'm on lunch duty at, at school. So I've got to be watching the kids. So my, my eyes are on like a pivot, right? I'm constantly looking and I'm having a conversation with somebody and this person says something that I kind of like disagree with and, and they know I disagree with it. So I kind of, you know, just acknowledged them and then looked away. And so somebody said like, oh, you did the look away thing. So like, that's how we know you don't. And then I like, was like, no, that wasn't, that's not a thing. And I was talking to them and they said something else and I looked away again and they're like, you did it again. You looked away. And I'm like, oh man, like I have a tell. Like, if I'm annoyed, I just, I guess I just look away. So like, what, I wonder what the mm means. Mm. Okay, moving on from there. So here's a good, I think this is a good one as far as like, hey, signs at your reseller, but kind of advice for everyone. You know, this idea that all the employees know you by name. Kind of like cheer status when you show up into the thrift store. Are you there yet? No, I'm not there yet. But I, I, I would say I'm getting more familiar with a lot... I don't go to like one thrift store the same way that you do, like one or two thrift stores. I float around so much that it might be a week or two before I go into the same one. It, the days, the time might be different. So I see a lot of the same employees, but I don't know if I'm in the same place enough yet. Uh, but but I d definitely see that happening. As do you try goes. to start a conversation with any of them at all? Yeah, I do. I'm, I, I mean, I try to be nice, but I'm just, I'm not like a super social person in general. Like, I'm, I'm more of like an in and out. Like one of my biggest pet peeves is when I'm at Target. He checking just goes, out. Mm, I just moves mm. on. Mm. When I'm at Target and or somewhere, you know, and I'm, I'm checking out and the person at the cash register is like asking questions about like what I'm buying and they want to like have a conversation with me. And I really <laughs> just want to like say, I, I really just want to say like, I don't want to talk about it. Just get, tell me how much I owe you so I can get out of here. Right. Like it's, it's kind of sad. Um, it's like the, I would say an RA is like that. Like Q4, like you're not there for conversation. You're ready to buy and go on to the But this store. is just like personal. Like just my, it's really bad because like. We keep learning more about Mike I every know, single episode. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like the most social guy. Like I, I, I'm, I'm nice to people, uh, hey, you but know I don't what? go out of my way to like just have conversations. He's going to have to. You know why? You know why? Ooh, our meetup. We have a meetup coming meet up. up. I'll be nice during that, I promise. <laughs> I'm a nice guy. If, if he does the look talking. away, we're all going to notice now. See? Mm. Or that. <laughs> so, hey, by the way, we are doing a SoCal meetup. It's going to be at the Red Robin in Santa Ana, March 30th. Put it on your calendars from 4 to 7 p.m. There is a link in our link tree. The irony of that. Uh, for you, just put your name and how many of your party will be attending so we can give the restaurant a number. Uh, we just want to, it's going to be, you know, I want to say cash, but it's going to be casual. 
kickback. We just want to get to know you, want to get to know other resellers, have an opportunity to network. And we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I think you could say cash. If it's casual enough, it's cash. Okay, it's going to be cash. Straight up cash. But, you know, even in those moments, you know, it's such an opportunity for all of us to learn from each other and just kind of share experiences. And, and just I'm looking forward to it. So, hey, we'll be posting more as time gets closer. But, hey, March 30th, Red Robin, Santa Ana, California, 4 to 7 p.m. Be yeah. there. It's going to be awesome. I'd love to meet you guys. Um, it, it'll be cool just to, to network and hang out. So I hope to see you. It'll be great. All right. Going back to. So I recommend that you, you be a little, like, more conversational. I am in the right. Like, that's the thing is I'm. I am an introvert, but I know how to be extroverted in certain, not how to be well, extroverted. You're a teacher. Yeah. So I, I, I don't want to say I put on a show, but like I can talk and, and, and have conversation with people and it's great, but I need to be like alone to kind of recharge and stuff. I just don't like small chat with somebody I don't have any connection with. Like I get it. The, I get the it. person at the cash register. Like I don't mind like, Hey, how's your day? Good. Thanks. Um, all right. Have a nice day. But like when they want to say like, so did you do anything fun this weekend? Um, yeah, I went, I went to a concert. Oh, what concert did you, like, I don't, I don't want to have this conversation with you. Like, I don't know you. Yeah, right. But, but it might help. Like, I, I will tell you, there are certain stores that I'll walk in and they're Hey, Orlando, I thought about you. And they'll take me right to the item. Mm. And usually it's good items. It's profitable items. So, and, and they're good people. Like I would say one of the good friends I have now in my life came as a result of reselling. Uh, it, it's a former, you know, thrift store manager that I, you know, chat with every once in a while. And, and it came as a result of, you know, making sure I was putting my friendly face out there. So That's true. So anyways, just, hey, networking is so huge. And I would say it's even bigger than RA. But I don't know. I, I've had some thrift store scores that were mega scores because somebody in the reselling community or somebody at a thrift store just texted me and said, hey, Orlando, just to let you know, like I was at this store and I saw this item. It's probably something you're interested in. So even I would say network with other resellers. Yeah, that's a good idea. Right. And, you know, I get I get a lot of feedback that like in their town, they're not friendly. Have you experienced like non-friendly resellers? Yeah. Really? So, yeah. Well, I- like how do you know they're being friendly? At, when competition is fierce at at garage sales, and and again, I'm not I'm not garage sales are different. There's no time to talk at garage sales. Yeah, I think that's what I mean. Is is that there's been times at garage sales where you run into another reseller, and and when I run into listeners, it's been great. I've had great conversations. Mike with didn't listeners. give that. Mm. Yeah, no, <laughs> not on that one. Um, So yeah, when I when I run into listeners, it's been great. I love talking uh, with listeners and other resellers that want to talk. But there's times when people. I don't like when people make like snide comments to me. One time I was, I was, re- I was buying some stuff and somebody made a comment like, Oh, I guess everybody's a reseller now. Cause they were mad. Cause I got something that they didn't get. And I think you shared that before. I yeah. And that. I was just like, what are you like? Yeah, bro. Cool. <laughs> but I, I think you develop a thick shell when you're a reseller. Yeah, like I true. think that's one of the things like you, you go in and you see it and you know, back in the day you had been like, Oh, it's okay. You can look at it now. It's like, no, like I picked it up. I'm taking this. Like, I'm not going to lose that profit. Right. And you know, obviously savage, <laughs> it can be savage. I mean, it's, you know, I'll never forget. Um, there's toner. I don't know if I've told this story. So let me, let me give you the setup for the story. So I was at the, a neighborhood garage sale. And there was a guy that was walking and it was probably like six houses down or something like that. And I see a table and with my eagle eye vision, <laughs> which I, I have like 2,400, I wear contacts, but there were like, uh, I don't know, 12 to 14 toner on there. And I see it and I stop the car and uh, no, 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 no. Sorry. Let me rewind a little bit. I saw people walking, but then I saw another reseller driving towards it too. So I'm like, oh, what am I going to do? I'm in my car. I'm behind this guy's car, but there's other cars in front of him. You know how things get jam-packed in a drive in a kind of a roadway. So I literally stopped my car, put the hazards, closed the door, and, and I sprinted. Yes, I sprinted. Now, did I move as fast as I think? I don't, I'm not sure that happened. But I made it. I literally was there like music playing in the background. It probably, I was just gunning it. And, <laughs> you know, wind was in the I air. I could see it. And my hair was I wish, I wish I was there recording it. That would have been great. <laughs> but it was, and I get. I literally got there a second before, 
And I looked at the guy and I saw the other reseller like literally inches away. And I go, I'll take them all right now. How much? Just like that. And here's what's crazy. Uh, the guy was like, oh, what are you thinking? You know how I always say, yeah. don't give the first number. And so. You were willing to give the first number on this one? Uh, yeah, I did. Uh, but here's what's crazy. I said, you know what? I'll take all of it for, uh, I'll take all of it for 80. I just threw a crazy mm-hmm. number, right? Because usually you want to bid high because, you know, the other reseller might come in and ask for cheaper, right? Mm. I don't know what it was. Maybe because the dude saw me running. I don't know what happened. But he just w- walked away. Hmm. Walked away. And then after I go, you know, is there any way we can make it 60? Nice. And he goes, yeah, you know what? Why not? I want to get rid of these. That day, I think I profited, I think it was like $1,200 net. Oof. That was worth the run, man. It was worth the run. It was worth being out of breath. It was worth all of it. My car was in the background just hanging out. But you know what? I made it. That gives me an idea for a YouTube video. We need to do like a reseller training prep video like like well, rocky I, style like preparing for garage sales like doing all the warm-ups and stretches and like how to scan really fast like i think there fun. needs to be a training program for for yeah. resellers well i don't know we'll you gotta see. drink your the glass with the raw eggs in it and the diet out of your pure hustle podcast mug there you go all right <laughs> let's get back to this oh i like this one this one says customers assume you work at the thrift store and ask you to help them have you had that happen? I have had that happen. Okay. Give me a story. Um, I mean, it's not like I've had it happen at multiple it was just stores. Story, but yeah. Yeah. But it, it one time I, I had a bunch of stuff in my cart. Like my cart was full, right? Which I think is one that, reason. That's a sign. Think, yeah. yeah. Because they think you're like doing returns. And I actually had did what we talked about at the beginning. I was waiting in line. I researched an item and I was like, oh, actually, based off the condition of this, I don't think I'm going to be able to make what I want to make. And there wasn't anybody behind me. I was like, I'm just going to put these back and not like do the, I don't want these at the register. So I push the cart back over to the shoe rack and I put them back and a customer comes up to me and, and starts asking me about parking across the street. And is it okay? And what about this? And what, what time does the store close? And I'm like, uh, I think it's okay to park there. The sign says the store closed. Like I'm just Meanwhile, answering the, questions. The guy's tar- car got towed. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. I guess I look like I work there. No, I, that happens to me at Target. I always make sure I don't wear, don't wear a red, red shirt. shirt yeah. I know it's happened to me because I always mm-hmm. have these khaki shorts that I wear. And every once in a while when I wear a red shirt and I have a full cart, they think I'm restocking or mm-hmm. something. Happens to me a lot. Yeah. You know, it happened to me today at Walmart. Uh, I was dressed up uh, to go somewhere and I show up and I had like a light blue shirt and automatically like everybody stopped. Like I was a visiting manager. I should have been asking if there was any clearance in the bag. Ah, I should have thought of that earlier. When I was in high school, friends, of, some of my friends and I would would go into Walmart with like clipboards and like a shirt and tie, and we'd act like we were managers. How'd that go? It was. I probably shouldn't talk about it because it's not right. But I think statute of limitations is done. It's it was pretty <laughs> funny. Like we would we, we'd prank each other and have each other do stuff like go up to an employee and be like, "Go ahead and just take your 15 and then like walk on and wow. And then we'd leave the store real quick because we'd be nervous. But you know, like. We're like, oh man, we totally like got someone in trouble. That was be- before your prefrontal cortex connected. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. I was, I was not a fully functioning human being yet because I was a teenage boy. Okay, all right, just checking with you. All right, I had a beard at the time though, so I didn't look like a teenager. You had a beard boy. in high school? Oh yeah, that's intense. Yep. Like I did not have this until like probably right out of college. Sixth grade, full mustache. What? You're one of those guys? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Okay. All right. So garage sale. Now, here's a question. So somebody had, you know, the garage sales are always kind of like awkward when you take out your phone, Mm. right? You kind of got over that a little bit. Yep. Like 100%. Like you don't mind just throwing it out there and just looking at it. I'm a lot better at it. I've gotten better just at at knowing where to stand and watching where people, like when, when the person at the garage sale is talking to somebody else, that's the time to be, you know, scanning and looking stuff up. I did have... I, at a garage sale this weekend, I looked something up, and the person asked me, "Like, oh, did you just look that up? How much is it, how much they go oh, for?" I, that, and it was I the person who I was buying it from because I was like, "Oh, how yeah, much for this?" And they're like, yeah. "I don't know. Like, did you just look it up? I can't. What, what, what's it?" And I'm like, "Oh man." And I yeah. did I, you tell them? Well, I, that's one of the things, right? This is a guilty little white lies. Yeah, lies. and it says I need to repent. Yeah. Um. I. I. I basically, you know, I. I've said like, yeah, I just didn't know what it was. I was looking up what this what this is, you know, and and sometimes that's hundred percent true, right? I, I bought this. I bought this <laughs> tape deck. Hundred percent true. Is there is such a thing as ninety nine percent true? Um, it's a hundred percent true. It's just not all of the truth. 
Okay. The statement is fully correct. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it just wasn't the entirety of the story. So, yeah, I, I've, there was this Library of Congress uh, tape player thing for people who um, are hearing impaired or, or various things like that. So uh, visually impaired. And and so this this tape deck thing was big. It was yellow. It said Library of Congress on it and it had a model number. And so I'm looking this up and it, the comps were going really, really high on it. And so the person asked like, did you just look that up? And I was like, yeah, I didn't know. What, what, is, what, what, is, what is this thing? What is the Library of Congress? And so I just played. That's what I, you know, I didn't say like, and they sell for a ton of money. Well, I, that's the worst is I've done it where I pulled out the comps and then like, they'll do the awkward, like bump up against and me look. and look. And I'm like, dude, like that's personal space. Mm. But, you know, you're, yeah. you're kind of stuck at that point. But I have done the other way where I've used comps to lower the price. Hmm. I haven't done that yet. And I've good. been very blunt. Like, hey, I'm a reseller. Like, this is what I'm looking to sell it for. That's why I need you to maybe if you're willing to drop the price. And, and it's worked. Not 100%, but it's worked. So... What do you <laughs> do? You, so do you ever like before you pull out your phone, right? And you start taking out your phone. The people ask you, like, are you gonna look that up? Yeah, I've had I've had people ask that. Um, usually they're okay. Like if they're at a, if they're selling something at a garage sale, they're okay getting rid of it. And and you know sometimes they don't know what it's worth, and so they're just asking like, well, are you, are you gonna look it up? I don't know how much that's worth. Um, so I've had people ask that. Um, because I've had it where I've done that, and then, like, I'll text you, and then I'll look it up. And then oh, like, I'm just texting somebody. Yeah, and then I'll look it up. See, that's, it was true. 100% true. It was 100% true. It just wasn't true. the entire there truth. There you go. But overall, like, I'm always straight up with it. I mean, I think we're at a place now that most people are pretty savvy and know what you're doing with your phone. At least I think they are. The other one that's hard for me, I guess, and this one is maybe one I need to repent of, but... I feel really bad when I it's when I'm guilty. It's a guilty episode. Yeah, when I'm really interested in something and then I'm doing the comps and I realize it's not worth what I thought it might have been worth. But the the person who's selling it to me is already really excited. And we've been talking about it for a little bit. And now I have to do the oh now I don't want it at all. Like you won't even like ask for a lower price. No. So like there was this this set of just, I'm thinking of like the set of pots and pans that looked really cool and. Um, he gave me a high number, but I was like, oh, these are really, really nice and they're brand new. And so I looked them up and he was selling them probably about what, what it'd go for on eBay. And I could have gone a little lower. It just wouldn't have been worth my time for the, okay. the weight and all of that stuff. I, I thought they were going to be like three or $400 more than they were actually going for. And so after talking to him for like five or 10 minutes about these, as I'm trying to look up the specific model numbers and I'm trying to do the research without him seeing that I'm trying to look up comps, then I realize they're not worth anything. And then I have to do the, um, yeah, I don't think I want them now. But I'm doing that, yeah. like building a fort around myself because I don't want other resellers to come up and snatch them. So I have to be the one interested in them. So do you build forts at garage sales? I mean, I guess I'm trying to think of like what what exactly that means of building fort, but I do try and protect the stuff. So I bring it to me. I've got it in front of me. I'm looking it up or holding it in my hands, right? So there are things that that I'm researching and I'm holding on to or that I've got right by me that, you know, I might not be buying. See, I'll usually take stuff at a garage sale and I'll ask the owner, like, hey, can I put this back here? So I'll go into like the garage and put it behind something. That's a good idea. Because I've had it before where stuff is out and then, you know, you see people start touching and, yep. and researching and you just get this like territorial like back off, right? Mm -hmm. But it avoids all that because I've, I've had people try to take stuff. I've had people take stuff and try to offer money for it right there and hoping that I didn't notice because I've seen other I've seen it in front of me where uh, somebody had done that and they took off and they're in the car and the guy's like, where's this thing? And then the owner goes, oh, that guy bought it. <sighs> Gone. I, I want to share an awkward story about an interesting moment I had. Oh. So, all right. So this is so uh, I think a sign of a reseller is how hard your grasp is on items. You know what I'm talking about? Like, do you grab Clarify. stuff lightly? Like, let's say you're all going into a garage sale and you know there's a lot of people. Like, do you just, like, lightly carry it or do you just grab it and hold on to it? I I have a persona. Well, We're getting I'm, very detailed I have, here. I've, I've, I have a certain way I carry myself when I'm at garage sales. There are people who, who roll in hot and heavy like that and they're grabbing things and they're almost aggressive with like asking quite like I try and come in as like the kind of naive, Hey, how's it go? Good morning. 
I'm looking at stuff, kind of hold. I kind of want to laughing because I, I, I have not seen this in action, even though I've been on garage selling with Mike. Yeah, well, I mean, that was because I was very timid when I yeah, was yeah, with you, when I was first still learning. Yeah, but like, I like to kind of seem like a little aloof. Hey, how you doing? I'm looking at stuff. I don't want to seem like the person who's who is a reseller. Like, I'm I'm coming to buy your stuff really quick and get out of here because I feel like people are going to go a little bit higher prices. Whereas I'm just the guy looking at baby stuff and I'm like, Oh, this is so cute. I have a son. He's two years old. I'm, I'm going to sell this. I'm not going to give it to my son, but I have that little quick conversation. I buy it. And I'm not like the person like how much? Yeah. But, well, but you're a little more aggressive. Yeah. I am. Well, what ended up happening was there was a Floby, and it was new and sealed and packaged. What's a Floby? So Floby, Well, we don't need those, but <laughs> they're like those, uh, those haircut, uh, cutting systems. Mm. Have you ever seen it? It's like a little vacuum and it pulls up the hair oh. and it cuts it. They were, I guess they were big at some point in time. So that's a bolo for you, even though this isn't one of our update episodes. Floby. Floby. And it was new and sealed. And I'm at a, an estate sale and I see it amongst this like pile of junk, like just stuff all over. It was one of those estate sales where I think the person had to leave quickly and everything just got tossed out. And so I'm going through and I see this Floby, like, you know, the sound in the background, oh, and it's like glowing and I'm like staring at it and I'm reaching for it. So I grab it. So I have it. And, the, the, you know, I asked how much do you want for this? And they said five bucks. I'm like, five bucks. Yeah, I'll probably make like a hundred dollars. And I, I haven't checked the Floby market lately, but there was a time where I could sell a Floby for close to a hundred dollars or more if it was in really great condition. And I see two sets. I see a set, not two sets, a set of hands grabbing the Floby out of my grasp. Oh, no. Like, yeah, literally, like, gonna... over here, just, like, pulling. And I'm like, what? And I pull back, right? And I'm not a small dude, right? So the guy, like, I pulled him with it. And he just kept grabbing. And I'm like, dude, what are you doing? That's mine. I'm like, no, it's not. I just paid for this right now. He goes, no, that is mine. I'm like, no, no, no. Excuse me, sir. I think you are incorrect. I paid for this. This is now my item. And then the girl that told it to me goes, uh, Dad, did you not want me to sell that? Oh, gosh. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm in this quandary now. Like, do I give this dude back his phobie? Do I just go sell it, sell it, and walk away? I mean, literally, we we're going to like. It's like, no, no, no. It is it is mine. Well, I, I, I own this. Well, it all changed, right? Because before I heard that, like, I was ready to throw down with this yeah. dude. Because I'm like. There's one thing, like, if you got to it first and, like, I missed it by a split second. But when you're pulling things out of my hands I still aggressively. Think, yeah, I still think there's a, a, a place for being tactful um, that, that he missed, too. Like, he should have approached, like, oh, I'm so sorry. I had no context. Yeah, he should have said, I'm so sorry, like, that that we weren't supposed to put that out to sale. Like, how much did, did you already pay for it? Like, we'll give you your money back. I'm, I'm, I'm That's not for sale, right? If you would have came at at you with that proposition, I think you would have, you know. No, I it would have definitely, you know, I would have been a nice Orlando. But no, nah, man, like the guy was, he was in my in my space, and on top of that, aggressive and yelling, and it just, man, it was it was one awkward moment. It's one of those where you get in the car and like you get flashbacks. Like I can't believe that just happened. Yeah, no, when those things when when I get that like aggravated with an incident like that, it uh. It rattles me for like the rest of the day. I constantly think about it and I get frustrated. Like, and it's probably not a good thing, but like, you know, <laughs> Do I you guess turn green. Like, yeah, don't make me I, angry. I think it's just like the 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 spike of of adrenaline or whatever that 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 goes, which you know your body releases because you need that in a flight or f- fight or flight moment. But but then the rest of the day, you kind of still have that like adrenaline, you know, fatigue or whatever it is that's going on. <laughs> It's intense. It was intense. Now, here's somebody else had mentioned that you may be a reseller if you have a fanny pack and battery packs. Is that part of your uh, equipment when you go garage sales? I should bring battery packs, but I've got a very, um, I'm very careful. My phone, the battery dies really fast. It does not last long. It's old. And so I wake up in the morning and by the time I put in like the addresses that I want to go to and I, you know, I'm doing a few things on my phone in the morning. By the time I get in the car, it's already at like 70% and I'm using it for GPS. So it is plugged in the entire time it's in the car. It gets unplugged for the search. And then as soon as I get back in the car, it's plugged in. Um, So I don't bring battery packs with me, but battery is like constantly on my radar. A hundred percent. And I will say there's more like, I, you know, I, I do think, like, I don't use a fanny pack. I do use I do. 
You do. That's right. I, I, I remember grabbing you one a while back. But I use cargo shorts, right, with the Velcro. Mm-hmm. So in one pocket, I have the bigger. Well, I shouldn't say all this because I'm going to get pickpocketed now. Someone's going to be like, all right, that's the big pocket on the cargo. That's pants. Orlando. Oh, wow. Okay. That's where it keeps the money. Okay. Well, actually, well, sometimes I do. Anyways, I don't, <laughs> what, what, I, what I meant to say is I bring other equipment. So sometimes I'll bring double A batteries or triple A batteries, you know, in case I come test up. items. Yeah. Like if I, if there's a TI calculator oh, or, you I know, I thought of that. Yeah. Cause you know, sometimes you're willing, if it's really cheap enough, you're like, I don't even care if it works, but sometimes you want to know. Man, why stop there, man? I, I got room in my fanny pack. I'm thinking I'm bringing a cassette tape, a CD, uh, some headphones, because there's a lot of times it's like, oh, I want to test this thing. Some batteries. Cassette tape is huge. Because you find some nice tape decks, it's definitely worth your time. Yeah. I never even thought about that. That's great. Okay, so we're saying- a backpack, VHS. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but for Too reals, fun. for reals. TV, like a little mini one. <laughs> but but on, on, on a real note, so we're talking about, okay- Battery packs are like I, I know a, a couple of resellers so quick ship quick, they have like battery packs galore. Like when I go thrifting with them, like power is never an issue. Like the ones for their phones. Yeah, nice. like they're always ready to go. Uh, fanny pack I think is good. Um, I'm always a fan of separating bills. Yeah, I do that. All right, because the worst is when you go somewhere and you're like negotiating and like, oh, gotta get through the twenties before I get to the one. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, Especially when you're trying to like. Go low because do you ever buy something somewhere and then as you're leaving, you find something else and then you buy that yeah. thing? Um, it's always great when you could talk someone when you when you talk someone from five dollars down to like two dollars, like how about two? And you open it up and you could just pull out the two dollars and you're not flashing like here's like four hundred dollars in twenties, you know what I mean? Because then the next item that you try and talk them down, they're gonna be like, no, no, they know what you have, yeah, that's a big thing. Uh, batteries, double A, triple A, separated cash. Separated cash. I say tape. If you're into vintage electronics, I think a cassette tape is, cassette is money. Tape. It's a good idea. Um, VHS. Eh. Maybe the headphones, right? Like the little, like not like huge ones like we're wearing right now, but like just the little iPhone ones might not be a bad idea. Like to just test things out. Yeah. So I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna be testing a tape player, I mean, what if it's a Walkman, right? Okay. Because every time I've gotten like a used Walkman, the headphones that come with it are like janky and busted, and never work. Is Janky, you know, I have a question. Is Janky just a San Diego word, do you think? No. No? I thought it was just, okay, anyways, sorry. We'll I don't think so. There. By the way, your earphones, I saw that Walkman you sold. I have a, the earphones that go with it. Do you? Oh, we should But have, I don't have a Walkman. We should have, uh, we should would, have collabed on that. I would have brought you more money. So, so I always think, and that's one thing I do as a, when I do garage shows, like I think long term. Mm. Not saying you do this with everything because you'll just end up hoarding a bunch of junk. But, you know, when it's like a Sony Walkman, if I see Sony vintage earphones, I'll pick them up because sometimes I'll find that Walkman and I can match it and it works. Nice. And and that works with remotes too. Like, and remotes are money, but if, you know, you come across a certain dual deck and you need a certain remote, sometimes remotes work with multiple devices. Yeah, we should. That's one thing I think I need to learn more about remotes. Like what you can get and it seems like a nice little side little side hustle on the side it, it's, it's pretty wild like it, you know i had shared an ig story a couple of weeks ago i had a dvd recorder which oh i would have made 300 dollars, but it didn't work like there was a there's error it was it was more than the laser but the remote itself on amazon 70 dollars, and it was low ranking and i only paid 10 dollars for that dvd recorder think about that that's just pretty wild so anyways if you are a reseller you probably have some kind of reseller kit that you roll with. That's right. Whether it's thrift store or garage sales. What's your What's your reseller kit? Let us know. Okay. What's your In what's the comments below. Carry? Yeah. Yeah. Or and and we're gonna get into a tire here in a little bit. I think that's science. But before we do that, hey, if you haven't had a chance to check us out on Instagram, make sure. Uh, see, that's a cube. Mike starts grabbing his coffee. As soon as they say that, watch every episode before this. You'll see that happen. Yeah. I mean. You, you got the whole rattle here. I've got nothing to do with my mouth, so I might as well drink something. <laughs> so, hey, if you haven't had a chance, check us out on Instagram. We are Pure Soul Podcast. On Twitter, we are Pure Soul Cast. On Facebook, we are Pure Soul Podcast. You can also find us on YouTube. If you haven't had a chance yet, make sure to subscribe to us. Thank you all again for getting us to 1,000 subscribers, and we're building. Hit the like button. Hit the hit the bell button after you subscribe so you get notifications. Yeah, and leave a comment below. And, you know, we're always open to have a conversation. We, we 
love engaging with all the listeners because it's just it's a great time of learning. And if you have anything you want to drop by, you know, hustle the week or a tip or whatever it is, you can always call us on our number, 619-738-1170. That is 619-738-1170. Or send us an email at purosopodcast at gmail.com. Whoop, whoop. You good with that? I'm good with that. All right. So now we're going to talk about you might be a reseller if, and we're going to deal with as a person, mm. like, how are you? So I want to talk about shipping supplies. I got to tell you, some of these comments just cracked me up. Like somebody had said, you get way too excited about boxes. No, boxes are a big deal. We buy a lot of stuff off Amazon. I remember I used to give you boxes. And then when I first started reselling, I was angry with myself for all the boxes I had given you. Really? Yeah. Not really, so, but like, cause you know, it's a commodity and now I've got so many boxes. It's not like that, but, but, but there's times where, you know, like a certain size box is it's hard to find and you get excited when you find it. So to give you context, so this was a sign that Orlando was a reseller. So I had an office as a vice principal and every morning I would get to my office and unlock the door and there will always be boxes and packing supplies in front of my office door. Yep. Right. Every single time. And then you go in my office and I try to like, the worst was when people brought a ton and I couldn't like stow them away. So I'm trying to have a serious meeting and there's like parents coming in you're (laughs) telling them that their kid has, you know, done something terrible and there's like boxes everywhere. There's air bubbles, there's packing tape, like, you're like, here, pop some, pop these little bubbles. It's therapeutic. It just constantly would happen to me like all the time. So that's a sign of reseller. Like if shipping supplies is a big deal for you. Definitely a reseller. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I, I've, I've, uh, we have friends now who save, and there's sometimes where the, the boxes they save for us. I'm like, I make the trip over to their house. I'm like, really? These, like, these were not good, but like, these were kind of junky boxes that weren't super nice, and I don't really want to ship in them. Um, but then there's times we've got one friend who works retail, and occasionally he'll just like pile up boxes and boxes and boxes when they get big shipments, and that's like heaven, right? Because it's like. Boxes look, look what he said. Nicely. That's like heaven. It's crazy. Okay, it's that's a sign of a reseller. When you equate getting sad. boxes to heaven, you've reached that level of it's reseller. It's like free money, you know? It's like, yeah, I agree. I don't have to pay for this now. And the air bubbles, man, those are way more of a deal now for me than... than I, I love the now. air pillows. Yes. Those are huge. I have a friend of mine who whose husband is, he deals with like uh, dentistry and he, he makes um, dentures and so on. So he has packages every day that can use those air bubbles and she keeps them for me. Oh my goodness, like... It is awesome. You want to hear something that I don't know. I don't think I've ever told this before. My dad um, used to be all growing up. He was a pressman at a newspaper. So his okay. job was to print newspapers. And when they print newspapers, it was so cool to see the the, the roll of paper that they would start the press with. And they, they'd have several of them. They'd, you'd have to bring it in on a forklift. It was so big. It was taller than I am. Um, tall. So it's like six foot tall. It's huge, like six foot diameter. And it would attach the machine. Well, when it would get down to about like, um, I don't know, anywhere from like about six inches left on the roll, it started to get, you know, because of the way it gets smaller and smaller, it could go too fast. And so they would cut it and then start the next roll like immediately and keep the press running. So they'd always have, they called them stubs. And it was like just a giant roll. Those are awesome. And they would, they would always recycle them. And he used to like on the side, sell them to this guy who had an antique shop. Uh, And so he'd sell like five or six of those big rolls for like, I don't know, 10 or 15 bucks, like nothing expensive. And I think like, oh my gosh, if I had one of those rolls, it would last me, it'd last me like half a year. Like those were huge. You know, I try to find those rolls because I I heard about them too. And I went to a newspaper place and instead they gave me all the newspapers they couldn't sell. Yep. Which is fine. Well, it's because the companies that, that, that do those rolls, they'll buy them back. Like at a discount. Oh, that what price, happens? Yeah. That's why I couldn't get them. Okay. Because those are really helpful. Oh, like yeah. they're, they're huge. So you, you know, when you get excited about shipping supplies. Paper. Just paper. Just like, paper. Like, paper. Yeah. Like you're a reseller. It's 100%. Yeah. Okay. So th- this happens to me. Well, how about dumpsters? Have, have you gotten into dumpsters more now that you're a reseller? Are you there yet? Um, No. Well, outside of dumpsters, there's a, there's a dumpster that I know of where where there's always boxes that are lined up on the outside because somebody comes and breaks down all the boxes and takes it to a different place. And so I will pick up a lot of the boxes from there. So I don't actually get into the dumpster, but I'm around the dumpster finding the good boxes. See, somebody said you take more out of dumpsters than you ever put in. And I, I think you reached that. I could see that. Well, it's happened to me where 
you know, I know a certain place where there's, you know, four or five dumpsters in a row and I know that they're always, you know, getting shipping stuff and boxes and yeah, I'll, I'll hit it up when I need to, especially when I need like that special box and I don't want to create a Franken box. I'll definitely do it. Yeah, well, that's good. I'll tell you what, I was at a Target the other day. This is, this is kind of, I'm walking with my wife, we're, we're shopping and I see the guy pushing the the cart of, he just stocked the shelves and there's like all of these boxes in this cart. And as he's walking by, I'm like salivating and I'm like, Oh, should I, salivating. Should I, should I ask him? That's intense. Should I man. just be like, can I have those? Are you gonna just give just bring them here? I'll take them. I'll take the boxes. I'm sure they would have let me, but that would have been a little maybe awkward to like leave Target with a bunch of boxes. But hey, if I need the boxes, man, I'll do what I gotta do. No, I get that. I get that. All right. So there you have it. All right. Now there's some interesting ones in here. So people had talked about how they have random shipping supplies everywhere, right? So somebody had said they can't use the poly bag seal as a toy. Right. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like yep. the little poly bag? Like they're everywhere in my place. Somebody had said that you have tons of shoe racks in one room and empty boxes in another. Are you having issues like that yet? One more time. Like do you have random shipping supplies in random places? No. We're That's very good. organized. That is <laughs> good for you. Yeah. I will tell you, there came and, and you know, I am organized, not at, like Mike, but there was a time when I would have shipping supplies like all over the place. It would just be obnoxious. Like it'd be time for dinner and we're at the table and there's like three random boxes underneath one of the seats. Okay. I guess to be fair, when we get shipments, like we get Amazon deliveries almost every day, I feel like. And so there's if we're not going out to our office, our garage where we we have all our stuff, there's times where there's some Amazon boxes and the air pillows and all that stuff that sit in the kitchen for a couple of days before we get out there. So yeah, yeah, I, that happens. You know, I, I think that's part of the you know, and and we let our son play in the boxes sometimes, and he tears them up. So okay, we're very see, careful. We're like, so okay, Mike went this from is a very a, organized to uh, you know what? There's truth to that. There's, there's times, yeah, there's times. Okay, I get that. Now, have you ever? You're probably not there. Have you ever been? mistaken as a hoarder or do you find that like sometimes you'll leave inventory in your car because you don't want to deal with it so you have all these multiple bags yeah I, I i leave inventory in the car sometimes i don't know if anybody's ever thought i i wonder what my neighbors think i'm, I'm again i'm not i'm not a good neighbor i'm not a nice guy so I don't talk to my neighbors very much. Mike is a really nice guy, by I'm the way. I'm a super nice guy. If you come to the meetup, you'll meet a really nice guy. I hope so. Um, but I don't talk to all of my neighbors, but they can see into my garage because the way like our, our complex sits. And so now my entire garage is like shelves and units and VCRs everywhere and all this stuff. So they probably look in and like, what is happening in that garage? Pro <laughs> I, I don't even I don't even want to think of what they yeah. think is happening in the I, garage. I hear you. No, and, and that's the thing. Like my car, the the worst are is, the worst is I don't know. Anyway, the worst is when it's a garage sale Saturday and I have like a kids event to go to, mm. right? And so like the car is like jam packed, right? So I'll be let's say my my you know one of my sons has like a tournament or something, and I'm there and we're on the parking line, we're talking to my kids, and I'm like, just get that bag over, son, right? And people are like looking like. What's in there? Like, why do you have all these Goodwill bags, or, or why why do you have all these speakers just like right there in your seat? Right, that's happened to me multiple times. Moving blankets, man. Let me tell you. I mean, any, any kind of blanket, I guess, will work. But I use moving blankets a lot for when I'm transporting like big camera equipment stuff that that I want to cover in the back of my car. Moving blankets work for a lot of things. Um, they if. When you if you're at a garage sale and you buy something that's potentially fragile, wrap it in a big moving blanket. Uh, but man, just cover stuff in your car and nobody will know. Because yeah, if people look in the windows, I mean, you mentioned tinting your windows, right? Yeah, I need to I need to tint mine more because I don't think they're dark enough to be able to cover with tin there. See, things I would have never thought of as recent. I told Mike that I said, you know, eight years ago I wouldn't have worried about the tint on my windows, but now I'm like they need to be presidential tint. Like they need to be the darkest possible because I don't want people seeing what I have in there. Yep. So, all right. So I think this is this has been like a confessional episode so far. What else do you got from? What are you going to confess oh, now? Oh, 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 I don't know about confessing, but somebody had said I, 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 these are some good things. Somebody had said that you are thrifting and listening on Friday nights instead of at the club or drinking. Which, yeah, we're not club kind of guys or drinking kind of guys. Yeah, but you know, there's something to be said for that. There's times when when you know. My Saturday mornings almost exclusively now are is, is for garage sales. I agree. And so like nothing else takes that place. I have people say like, hey, we're going to do a breakfast. You want to come? It's Saturday morning. 
nope, right? Like it's not going to happen or, or, you know, and, but people don't understand, yeah. right? Like we look at it and I go, if I don't go garage selling, I'm going to lose potentially several thousand dollars right? or even a several hundred dollars, but it's hard for people to understand yeah. that. Yeah. And, 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 you know, I, I just think for our people like us who are hustling as hard as we're hustling, you know, extra time to do the fun things, we look at it as, okay, that's a cost. It's going to cost me money. Whereas this time that I could be spending to make money. Right. And so our mindset is just different. So you're thinking of Friday night, how much is it going to cost me to go out to the club? How much is it going to cost me to go to the movies? How much, how much money could I make if I stayed home instead and listed? Yeah. I agree. And it, it, it always happens to me, but you know, you talk about going to the movies. It's one of those things where I, I'll tell my, my boys, you know, like, we're going to a movie or something like Hey, can we stop at the thrift store on the way? Because I think, hey, if I find something good with a nice ROI, it kind of pays for the pays for everything, right? Yeah, that's a sign of a reseller. Oh, I always think of yeah when you start thinking of going out to dinner as oh man, that was that Walkman sale that I found. Is it really worth that like really good sale to eat out? I guess it is, you know. Or it can make you feel like yeah, we could do this. I just sold, you know. <laughs> so yeah, you're thinking the in Sinbad? terms of you pull a Simbad, drop the cash, boom. Yeah, yeah. In case you have no idea what we're talking about, the previous podcast we had talked about how Sin- Sinbad had bought a car for with cash, right, on a show. Yep. Like he could have written a check, but instead he brought bags of money for the greater effect. Yeah, he just dropped it on the table. So we just call it the Sinbad. And he knew it was going to be funny <clears throat> because it was an awkward moment because they just told him his credit was so bad he couldn't buy a car. And he's like, I've got cash. Such a great story. Um, now, do you find that you use your phone more for eBay uh, I would say Amazon, but you don't do Amazon. So eBay and posting, you do anything else? Or you think it's still like you text more and you're on the phone more for other reasons? Uh, actual screen time, it's definitely reselling. It takes up really? the majority of my screen time. Um, I use my phone for podcasts and things like that. Uh, so that probably is runs more often or audiobooks. But actual looking at my screen... I'd say because I'm not a social media guy. Like you, you're you're the, you're you're the social media. It's guy our guy. it's our IG account. It is it is. But but I, I'm on there and I do things occasionally. But but you definitely like you're in that world, man. You've got this. So you probably are social media. But even that, it's reselling, right? No, it's all reselling. Like anything I anything we do on Instagram, any IG story, any feed that we do, it's all reselling related. Yep. So I definitely, I would say Amazon, once you get into Amazon, it's even worse. I can imagine. Like Especially you, if you're looking up like metrics and things like that. Or you're refreshing, you're constantly, it just gets addicting because I remember before there was a time where I didn't know that. So on the Amazon seller app, you can like refresh it and it'll show you, it'll pop up like how many items sold and how much money you're making. But then if you go to pending or if you go to orders, manage orders and you go to pending orders, it'll tell you what exact item sold. Right. So things got even more addicting once I knew that you could do that. And that was several years ago. So it gets pretty bad. And, you know, if people talk about it. I would say probably 100 times a day. If you're an Amazon seller, refreshing. I, I think that's a sign of being an Amazon seller. That's funny. Or, or uh, moving eBay and Amazon or whatever other tools you're using to your front page. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. All the time. Like, I think that kind of shows, <clears throat> you can tell a lot about somebody by like what's on their front page or at the very bottom in like the the important apps or whatever. Um, and as things become more important in my life, they move closer to the front. And then I notice like, oh, I haven't, I haven't really been working out a lot. I don't need this app. And it starts moving further and further yeah, back. Two know? screens over. <laughs> no, I get that. All right. So here's the thing. <laughs> Have you had this happen to you? You hear the cha-ching sound and you try to act like you didn't hear it. Have you ever been in a setting like that? Not yet. Oh, awkward pause. You, I'm trying to, I know it happened. I'm trying to think of what it was. I know it happened when I think I had, there was like a, uh, somebody, there's an admin from the school came into my room and it was during my prep period nice. and I'm doing something on my phone that was school related. And this person knows that I do eBay on the site too, but I was doing something on my phone, school related. I think I was doing attendance or something. It wasn't me by the way. No. And then the cha-ching happened. And I was like, oh, this totally just looks like I'm doing eBay. But I can't remember. <laughs> That's hilarious. That happened to me uh, when I was doing like a keynote. So like the ching sound. So I'm, I'm in front of, I don't know if you remember this. I was in front of the faculty and I had my mic right here, but my phone was right here. And the ching, the mic picked it up. Mm. And, uh, you know, I, 
I here's the thing you got to remember. Not everybody knows. Like that person knew. Well, they knew because I had, I had mentioned in the past that I did eBay. So I, they might not have known that that cha-ching sound was an eBay sound, but my mind went there because I, I just remember I was like embarrassed. Like, oh gosh, like now it just seems like I'm just working on this other thing. But yeah, a lot of people, they just probably think that you're a greedy person with that as your text message. Ching! You like, got a text message. Scrooge McDuck said it. <laughs> but here's the I think I think you are definitely a reseller if you look forward to that sound more than listening to music. More than listening to music? Yes. Yeah, because I mean that's money. Because I mean, every I, day, every time that happens, the endorphins just kick in, like cha ching, and you're like, yes. Yeah, it, it, and it, that that noise does make a big difference because my phone's on silent a lot now. Okay. And my wife, um, for whatever reason, her notifications got turned off. So we've gone like two weeks without hearing a cha ching, but we've been making sales. Well, the other night while we were making dinner, her phone, the notifications were back on, and we heard cha ching. And yeah, it's a different feeling than just looking at your phone, like, oh, something just sold, or we got an offer. That sound, man. It, it well, it's funny because I've heard Amazon sellers that are new. Go, hey, does the Amazon app make a cha-ching sound? Right? Because that would be really addicting. Like if you, you know, think about Q4 and you're making a ton of sales, it'd be cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching all night and all morning. <laughs> yeah. Like what could it be? Because it couldn't be cha-ching. Well, there is be... a sound. Like when you do a merchant fulfilled sale, there is a sound that happens, but it's nowhere like the eBay cha-ching. Is that trademarked? I wonder. Well, I'm sure that specific one is, but okay. but you can have one that's close. Okay. Could be. All right, so some people here had mentioned something about on several levels. Like they either A, check out what other people are wearing and see how much it'll sell for, or like they think about it in their mind, or they'll go to people's house. Somebody had said they went to somebody's house and they went to their boyfriend's, that their friend's boyfriend's closet and try to look up comps. Huh. I mean, I've had people who know that I'm a reseller that will ask me, like, hey, is any of this stuff? So I, I've looked for them up comps, but I don't know if I've ever, like... Isn't that funny? You're the go-to, but they have the same ability. Yeah, they could look it up. Um, but, I mean, again, like, I, I have more experience, so I understand, like, hey, just because it says this, you got to look up sold. So unless they do it on on the regular, they, they might not know that. Um, but that's intense, like... I wonder if this person like army crawled into the room, and did it privately, or if it was like, "Hey, I come, to, I, I collect shoes. Like, are any of them worth something?" And like, because yeah, that would be a good way to 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 maybe see inventory that you wouldn't normally get a chance to see, especially if it's a good collection. But it happens to me. It happens to me. I would say if I'm traveling, I'm at the airport, or if I'm at the mall, like I'll see somebody with like, let's say, like an Orvis jacket, or somebody with Hoka One One shoes, or you know, a Pendleton flannel. You're just like, hmm. And I've even considered like. Making an offer. Can I buy that shirt off your back right now? I, there's somebody, I think it's uh, San, Diego, San Diego Vintage Apparel. They're in San Diego. And they bought a Coogee sweater off of somebody like in Louisiana. Wow. Like he was wearing it and they offered him money for it. That's crazy. I want to do that. That's intense. But, you know, I do pay more attention to, because one of these says paying attention to trends of like what the young people are wearing. Um, I, I, I do think I pay attention to clothes more than I ever did before. Um, specifically brands. Like I feel like everybody pays attention to certain things like fit and, and is it neat and things like that. But now, yeah, I'm looking, I'm like, oh, that's a, that's a Patagonia or that's a, you know, oh, that's this brand or that brand. And so I'm doing in my mind, like how much is their outfit worth and oh, is the style in? And so, yeah, it's trying to keep up with, with the trends. Definitely and, sign of a reseller. Yeah, and I've, here's I, this one. I don't think it's on here, but I refuse to buy clothes now for myself. No, that, that that we're going to talk about that. Really, yeah. That I that I couldn't sell on eBay later. Yeah, somebody said so. You do do that. Uh, I do that. Yeah. So, so are you going to sell this right here? This the North Face. The, this actually was a thrift store find. I have another North Face that I bought. Um, that's not. But I until I was like you know thrifting and reselling, I would have never bought North Face. I just would have went into Walmart or Target or whatever and just bought whatever. But now my thing is, if I'm going to spend money on a a, a outfit. I want to know that it could be sold on eBay later and either recomp some of my money. Otherwise, what's the point of buying something and then throwing it away when it doesn't fit anymore? Or mm -hmm. so, you know, so. Yeah. So somebody had actually said that like their closet is full of stuff that they sourced that was flawed. Have you gotten down that road at all? The, I, I, <laughs> oh, there we go. Live right here. There was a, this didn't sell because there was a, a rip in it and I sewed I learned how to sew stitches into it, and I fixed it. And so if you're listening to the flawed. podcast, Mike is pulling a pocket on his left side that has a hole in it. Yeah, it's, it wasn't a hole. It was a rip all the way across, and I stitched it, and I feel like it looks pretty good. It's not it's not terrible. I would never sell it, but, um, you know, $2.50 at a thrift store. Um, you can't beat that. 
but it but it changes. Like somebody had said, somebody had said this. This cracked me up. As my wife says, you look homeless as I sport my vintage wear. Oh jeez. Now let's talk about garage sale dress code. Do you have a? We've talked about this yeah. previous episodes ago, but where you drop food on yourself so you look sloppy. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. I was being a little facetious. Like I don't do that, not on purpose, anyways. But do you find like you dress differently when you go to garage sales? Mm-mm. No, not at all. No, I'm. I've I've recently got into uh, wearing basically like hiking outfits all the time when I'm not wearing my shirt and tie. Nice. So yeah, it's comfortable. I wear I wear North Face or Patagonia and and. Prana, I think is how you say it, pants. They're like the most comfortable pants I've ever worn. Kind of feels like... But don't you uh, think that takes away from your bargaining power a little bit? I don't... I mean, no. I don't think so. I feel like... Or maybe you look like a Patagonia collector and you're able to negotiate a little bit better. Maybe. I, I, see, I'm not really big. I mean, maybe there is something to be said for like your negotiating power. I don't want like pity, right? Like I don't want somebody to be like, I've got to give this to him for cheap because it looks like he's... In, you know what I mean? So I don't I know. Dress, I want to dress like... Reasonable. I feel like I don't know. It's fine. I don't, I'll find my most faded shirt, and I'll go. and And what I do sometimes is, like, I want like you know. I remember when I was a VP, I always wore like a sports coat and a tie. Like, there's no way you'll catch me. I won't even wear like a polo shirt. I'll only wear t-shirts, and I won't even wear like nice shoes because. I do think, like, think about the competition. Like, for us in San Diego, like, a lot of the competition, like, no one dresses up to go to these, so you stick out. Like, you know, we talked about Gary Vee in the Trash Talk episodes. Like, he ro- shows up in his Range Rover. Mm. Like, you're going to lose, like, right away. I've seen people roll up in their Escalades to garage sales. Yeah, I think there's I think there's something to be said for that, like, going that far. But I don't know if anybody's ever looked at the way I dress and said, like, Oh my gosh, this is like this no, guy I'm makes not. six figures, right? <laughs> like it's not like that. Like I just I try and look neat and presentable all the time. Like I'll shave before I, I always shave in the mornings, whether I'm going garage selling or wow. going to work. So yeah, I think we're different perspectives. I'll shave for the podcast, but I won't shave for a garage sale. I don't know. I, I just think I don't know. I'll leave. I'll, I'll throw Spanish in there too because that helps me out. Yeah. See, I think the the thing for me maybe I mean there's two different mindsets. Just in life in general, I think. First impressions make a big deal, and, and it's different when you're negotiating, right, for for reselling and, and going to a garage sale. But people are going to look at the way you look, and they're going to make a judgment about you. And my thing is, it, this is a sad thing, but it's just they've discovered this. Like, the better somebody looks, whether it's the clothes they're wearing, all the, the different factors, what somebody would consider attractive, immediately more trustworthy. You like think so? Having a beard makes you less trustworthy. Like so, I, we're, I we're that, in like, a bad place right now. I know. I, I wear the beard, and I it's fine. But no, I there think, are studies. There are studies yeah. confirmed that be, people with beards are less trustworthy. That, that's well, at least the they're appearance. Per, they're perceived to be yes, less trustworthy. Yes. yes. So, um, luckily, we live in an area where it's like kind of hipster, and people have beards, and so it's not abnormal. But that's just one sign, I think. So people they they look at you, and without like thinking this, this, and this, and and they're not like cognitively going through. I trust this person. I don't. But I want when somebody looks at me to go like, oh, this is a nice young family man, you know, and and he smiles and he's looking at kids toys and um, and they like me right away and they're more willing to make deals with me. And they're not just like, oh, this guy's here to buy stuff. Yeah. See, I have the other way. I don't want, you know, I don't want anybody to know that I'm anywhere close to six figures. I just want people to go. You know, this guy is a reseller and he, he's just, he's trying to make, make that profit and you know, we want to help him out. No, I see. I don't, I don't, if I think once you're pegged as a reseller, I don't think they're going to try and help you out. Yes, I think they that, will. I We've think talked about I this. I think it's the opposite. I think once somebody sees you're a reseller, they know that they, they're going to be able to get top dollar out of you. Okay. Let us know in the comments below. And if you listen to podcasts, I don't know what it is, but we agreed at one point that it was better to share that you're a reseller. No, I think it's fine to share you're a reseller, but I think if you come in with this, like the people who come in, they're like, this, 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 and and no, I agree. No, no, with that. there's a difference between being a jerk and just like grabbing stuff and like I'll give you a five dollars. I mean, this. because even you said like one of your tricks when you walk in is good morning, how are you doing? Oh, like, no, 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 there, there's a difference. Like, regardless of my uh, my uh, my opinion, regardless of my appearance, I'm always cordial, I'm always nice because you know, we've always talked about like in the end, you attract more flies with honey. Right. So I'm big on that. And unfortunately, I, I feel like appearance is part of that in our culture. It is. It is. 
I don't know if hands. I mean, it's all these things. Like I'm not like a psychologist, but like even things like, okay, hands and pockets is cold. I try and keep my hands out because the first thing you look at when you look at somebody, whether you realize or not, is their hands. Like it's, it's naturally in us because even without thinking about it, if you record somebody and look in slow motion, when somebody walks in a room, you instantly glance at their hands and then at their eyes. Right. Because if by looking at their hands, you can tell, is this person dangerous? They have something. Are they going to, right? Like we all do that. It's just instinctive. See, I will say when I do retail arbitrage, I'm dressed my best. Like I, I'll, I'll like not, not dress my best. Like I have a suit and tie on, but I make sure that everything looks crisp. I make sure that I'm clean shaven. I make sure that, you know, everything's all good because I don't want people to see me in at Target or Walmart, like as, you know, whatever, some kind of thread or that I'm doing something shady, which again, which is crazy because some of the shadiest people in history dress nice and look nice. Right. I mean, that's the reality of it. But, you know, there is something to be said in retail arbitrage. But when I'm at a garage sale, like, I don't want to let people know, like, hey, you know, I can afford vintage Patagonia and I can afford some cool pants and I can afford some Supreme sneakers. Not that you wear Supreme. Like, I never want to give that perception. I instead want to give the perception of, like, you know what? Those things aren't really that important to me, so I'm not going to give you that top dollar. Yeah, see, I think it's weird because when you go into – and that might be the case if you go to a garage sale where – the family is obviously you're wearing an outfit or dressed in a way that that puts you at a socioeconomic level that might they might see as above where they're at. But a lot of times, this, the places I'm getting some of the best stuff, the houses I'm going to with the, the best deals, the best items, they are very clearly way above me in, in the socioeconomic ladder, mm-hmm. right? And so I feel like the closer I could look to like, hey, I'm one of you. I'm your bud, right? I don't, I, I don't know if I'm going to get more of the charity or of the like – the connection of like, hey, how's it going? Like we're buds, even though we're not. But if they instinctively feel like you're one of us, whatever that means, then then you, See, I think, you win. I think it's all about personality and approach. I, I think and in the sense that I I don't think like for me, you know, you look at me like, would you have a conversation with me? I don't know. Right. But, you know, you see me in action. Like I'm able to talk to people that look top tier and you know, they treat me with the utmost respect and they have no problems with me and they're willing to negotiate. So I don't know, maybe it has something to do with how you come across too. not only your appearance, but your demeanor and the way you talk to people. I think that's a big deal. I think either way, as a reseller, you got to find that niche that works for you. That's true. I, I think of quote of the week this week. I heard, wait, we're doing a quote of the week yeah, on I these heard, episodes. I heard somebody say, we always, it's every week. Is it's it? The okay. Week. Um, uh, the, the guy said, and this was just like business advice. I think it might apply for this, uh, and you're going to hate this, Orlando, but um, always wear a wardrobe or outfit that's slightly above your means. And I was never big on that because I'm a very thrifty person, but I think there's something, I think you even act differently when you're dressed nicer. I say you do you. That's it. Because you know what? I've been in that world where I try to dress and look the Joneses and be like everybody else. In the end, it doesn't go very far. Yeah, but if you weren't doing something in, in an environment you wanted to be at, I well, mean, like when I was a VP, obviously I'm going to wear a tie and a sports coat because that's part of the job. Like that's what people expect. You know, if you saw the IG story today, you would have seen me in a sports coat and so on. Cause you know, I was looking at possibly picking up a, a super part time teaching gig cause I miss teaching, but you know, I would definitely would not have shown up like this. Now, what about just in your day to day life though? Like, so if I wake up and I go to the gym. I can't believe we're talking about this. We talked about this like a few episodes ago. Yeah. You, so you wake up, you go to the gym, and I'm wearing, you know, gym shorts and and gym shirt and whatever. Um, very comfortable. Say so I wake up and I don't go to the gym and I'm wearing that outfit and I'm like, I'm going to stay like this all day. Maybe not going to shave today. Probably should shower up, though. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but I end up, I feel like I'm not as productive during the day. If I were to, to actually like put on clothes that are like, I could go out and go to work wearing this clothes, I'm more productive during the day. I think it's a perception thing. I do. I, I, you know, the longer I've been reselling, especially now that I'm full time, it's, it's all been about, you know, Hey, I'm going to be me and I'm going to be just as productive with what I'm wearing. And I'm not going to worry about what other people think. Like, I don't care. Like I live that world. Now, again, you got to know your role though. You know, as a full-time reseller, like how I dress doesn't affect my business at all. Unless like I'm trying to do a retail arbitrage deal or I'm trying to do liquidation or I'm trying to do something. But but I think though, like what I'm saying, and and there's been a lot of 
at least people have presented this idea. We got some idea. comments last time when we started talking yeah. about this. I think there somebody presented the idea. Well, that was like me saying like you should have worn a shirt and tie to this specific the event. Poshmark yeah. event. But um, but beyond that, I feel I feel like that people people who work for home and maybe you can tell us whether you agree with this or not. But what I've noticed is or what I've heard a lot of people say is if you wake up, you're you're you work at home. If you actually get dressed as if you were going to the office, not saying like put on a shirt and tie at home, but like dress nice, you're going to be more productive than if you kind of stay in your pajamas while you're working at home. It kind of creates this mentality of I'm at home. I'm comfortable as opposed to I'm going to wake I, I think up. There's I'm going to I'm gonna actually have a morning routine as if I'm going to walk out the door and drive to an office. Now I'm at the office. Like it, it shifts your mindset to like, I'm in this outfit. I'm in this headspace. Work. I think there's truth to that, but I think also, you know, part of that is you should be able to, to get into that mindset without letting your appearance dictate how you function. It's routines. Maybe that's all it is. Yeah, I think it's more routine. I don't know. I think we're we're talking about different decades. Maybe. I think we're in a different place, man. But we already talked about that. Wow, yep. that was a rabbit trail of all rabbit it was. trails. Okay. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> what about this? Do you find that you can no longer buy full retail? I kind of, I feel like I've always been there. Um, I try, I try for the most part to get stuff that are on sales. Um, but yeah, it's definitely harder now, especially when you know, when I look up stuff and I see like, oh, maybe this will sell, this is on clearance. I wonder what it sells for on eBay. And it's already selling on eBay for less than the clearance price with shipping. I'm like, I should have checked eBay first next time I buy something. You are a more savvy shopper. Yeah. I mean, things mean a lot more. Like, I, I struggle now anytime. You know, uh, if you haven't followed the college picker on IG, you should. To me, he is the epitome of what reselling does to you. Like, he is always DIY, right? He's always like, hey, this latest thing was like, get your own modem instead of renting one from the phone companies. Right, you, all these things I probably would not have thought of until I started reselling. So, what do you what do you think is the biggest change? At, you know, now that you're a reseller, do you think it's that? Do you think it's the idea that you're no longer willing to be about, hey, I'm going to pay full retail, or I'm going to? You said you're always about deals, but do you think even more so now, or do you think it's something else? Um, I don't know. Let me think about that. What about you? What's your biggest change? Is it that? Well, it goes, no, it goes back to what we were just talking about two minutes ago. To me, reselling, you know, the signs that you might be a reseller is you stop caring about keeping up with the Joneses. I really, I really, I mean, as far as there's different kinds of resellers, though, right? You kind of like, you have certain resellers that are all about like, I'm going to look smooth all the time. Like I'm going to get the nicest ride. I'm going to, you know, get the nicest sneakers. And then you have like this other genre of, of resellers that are kind of like, Hey, you know, I don't care about any of that stuff. All I care about is like, Hey, finding good items, selling it for a profit. And really I'm not too concerned about how I look. I'm not too concerned about what people think about me. And you know, in the end, I'm going to be my own person and reselling kind of, develops that in, in you because for so long you're trying to live according to the social pressures in the society that you have to buy this and you have to get this, you have to act a certain way. But now that you're reselling, you take more ownership of what you do in life. Like you're like, I am who I am. And if people accept me, they accept me. And if they don't, they don't. So I think that's one of the signs of being a reseller, but I could be wrong. Let us know in the comments below. Do you resonate with what I just said? I'm interested. Well, that's good. And Mike has something different. I'm not, I'm not, I don't know what the biggest change is. I'm trying to think of that. I think, I think for me, the biggest change, um, because it's weird, you do it full time, I do it part time, but I have, and you know what this is like, so you did it both too. It's, it's, I think the biggest change is just life and the amount of free time that I have, like not having free yeah, time I agree, anymore. I agree with you. Um, and, and there's, there's, that comes with some baggage, right? Like reselling, what I've noticed with it is you start and once you start, you kind of, you can rein it in a little bit, but if you want to grow, you got to keep going and you get to a place where there is no more stopping or slowing down. Like today I got to go to work up oh, three things sold today. I get home late because there was meetings after work and, and I had another event that I had to go to. And by the time I get home, it's eight o'clock and I've got to wake up at four in the morning. And well, I guess I'm out in the garage packing. Right. And so I think that's been a big change is just shifting my priorities. And then, so when I have free time, recognizing that it's, it's important, it's valuable. 
And I think I just appreciate like time with family way more than I ever have before. I, I agree hundred percent. And on top of that, now that I'm full time, even more so because now I get to choose those times, right? Like it doesn't have to be a certain set time, but I'm even more careful and more, I would say, aware of the time that I don't spend and the time I do spend. Mm. But yeah, I think I think reselling overall, like all these things, you might be a reseller. I think most of you would resonate with, I, I don't know, probably 70 to 90% of what we said. But ultimately, it is, it's a lifestyle change. It is. Right? That's huge. what, if we want to get philosophical on this episode, like that's a big thing. It is, it's, I don't think it can just be a hobby. I think it eventually becomes just part of your life. That might scare some people. I know, but it, it's just, it's the reality of it. Like if, if you want to have, you know, consistent. Is it hobby level? You could be hobby level, but even hobby level, it's, it's a daily thing. Mm. You know, like you said, you get sales, you can't control when the sales happen. You know, but it's part of it. And yeah, it might be, it might scare you. And, and that's one of the things we talk about is you, you're just going to, you have to be willing to adjust. Now, I'm not saying you can't be wealthy. I, I know many resellers that are wealthy and they have employees and they don't devote as much time as like I do or you do. But, you know, it's just part of who you are now. So it's good stuff. Anything you'd like to add? I don't think so. I think we covered it all, don't I you? Think so, yeah. All right. Hey, thanks for listening to this episode. Thank you for all your suggestions. Make sure you're always being real. Be relevant. And be reselling. Please. Please.